Chapman University's Public Safety Department has 32 professionals dedicated to both law enforcement, campus safety, fire and life safety, parking and transportation services. When you're trying to keep a, a campus safe, you really have to develop community partnerships because our communities are so diverse. If you think about it, you could be dealing with a Nobel laureate or a, a professor that's an expert in their field. Then you have a student, a young person that's just learning who they are for the first time. You have representation from several countries around the world. So there really is no one size fits all approach. You have to develop trust. And the only way to develop trust is to work on those partnerships. You have to learn what's important to people, learn some of their cultures, and learn how to work with them in the congeal environment. Here at Chapman University, the Department of Public Safety, we prepare for any emergency prior to the emergency happening. We do this by opening up a line of communication with our local EMS provider, as well as our local fire and police agencies. Preparing in advance enables us to provide the best service we can possibly provide to our students, staff, and faculty. Our training for first responders on active shooter really deals with incorporating our local jurisdiction. You know, we work hand in hand with Orange Police Department and Orange Fire Department um, in conducting both large and small scale exercises that allow us to work collaboratively and then debrief from that and allow us to get better at what we're doing. Active shooter training for students, faculty, and staff really incorporates the run, hide, fight strategy that was produced by the city of Houston and endorsed by the Department of Homeland Security in which we really stress that as adults you have to do something. We've developed a PowerPoint-based one-hour training session looking at how you can utilize some of the scenarios that we use in the Run Hide Fight system. It also talks about the idea of strategies on how to help law enforcement, what kind of gunshot sounds like and what kind of suspect descriptions to give and what to look for um, in order to help that law enforcement response. You have a situation where you um, don't think something's right, you know, the resources that you can uh, go to in order for us in public safety, our psychological services and things can look at different ways to help out individuals, maybe help some, stop something before it happens. For crime prevention outreach, we have our Safe Ride program, we have our community library liaison program, we have a campus watch program and they all basically build on building rapports and making relationships on campus so that way we can educate um, the community and let them know ways that they can prevent having things stolen or being a victim of a crime. So we help them get rides home, we help have more eyes and ears and educate them to help be part of the public safety community because we can't be everywhere all the time. Our rape aggression defense program that we have on campus, also known as RAD, is educating and making awareness of your own personal strength and self. So that way, if you're ever put in a situation where you may be alone and possibly a victim of a crime, you might hopefully remember a few things that we taught you to get out of the situation safely. It's also important that you use technology in addition to your physical security and you know your community outreach. We have over 400 cameras that we utilize to keep an eye. They're basically a force multiplier, so extra eyes and ears uh, monitoring what's going on around the campus. This is a new camera system that we're uh, getting ready to implement soon and it's going to make it quicker for our dispatchers to be able to pull up cameras in certain locations. We're going to have maps throughout all of our properties, our main campus, our perimeter buildings, our res life buildings. When an incident takes place, a dispatcher will be able to zoom person that they need to follow for any security reasons. We use electronic door locks that can be locked and unlocked at a moment's notice and also provide a good door history of, of access of people that have gone in and out. We also have a number of intrusion alarms on campus uh, for security and uh, we have a number of uh, door alarms on campus, especially in the residential hall. So if students are propping doors, we can send an officer out to uh, investigate and, and shut that door and keep it secure. Obviously we have our fire alarms and all of our alarms are monitored by our uh, dispatch center 24 hours, seven days a week. We have been moving towards emergency communication systems 
which is a voice evacuation system, but it also gives our officers the ability to grab a mic and make an announcement through the building. The alert system we have on campus is our Panther Alert system. It's a mass notification system. If we had an incident on campus or locally that had a direct threat to the safety of our students or staff, we could send out a, a Panther Alert via text, uh, cell phone, land phone, uh, email, and we also have the capability to send it out over our uh, desktop notification which would uh, pop up on uh, any Chapman computer screen that's on the network. The safety app we have available is our uh, Panther Guardian. It's uh, free to staff and students and faculty. It allows them to set a safety timer. Uh, so if they're walking in their car at night and if they don't deactivate that timer in the specified time, then their information and their location would come up in our dispatch center. Um, it's like having an emergency blue phone with them at all times because they can also uh, do a direct call to public safety or uh, just by hitting a button they can call 911. Uh, one of the other features on there is they can do a confidential tip. If they saw a suspicious person or package, they could take a picture of it and uh, send that to public safety and again it would come up with their information. We want to continue to leverage technology. So we try to look at more officers, more people serving the community, more people engaging in those partnerships. 40% of our calls seem to be medical aids. We're getting a lot more medical aid calls, so maybe looking to the future of doing additional training and, and having some EMTs on board that can expedite response to those rather than relying on the local uh, fire department, that, that's an area we may look at expanding into. We want to continue to look at what the growing trends are, problems, and get out in front of them and try to solve them.